The famous Liverpool Overhead Railway operated alongside the Liverpool docks from 1893 to 1956. The line was initially built to transport the thousands of workers required for dealing with the ships and goods coming into the port of Liverpool. For 63 years the popular overhead railway operated fast, efficient services along the dock road from Seaforth in the north to Dingle in the south, where, in typical Liverpool style, the overhead terminated underground. However, by 1956, the private company didn't have the resources to fund the £2 million repair bill to reverse years of corrosion that the structure had suffered, and opted for closure. The first threat to the line was during the Second World War, a number of bombing raids severing the vital link a number of times, but not well known was that some wanted it removed, seeing as it being in the way of efficient port operation. The line survived the war, and even started to modernise its fleet of trains. As we all know from the end of the 60s through to the 1980s, the docks saw a steady decline, taking with it the dock workers, the very lifeblood of the line. The result was large parts of the dock estate becoming increasingly derelict and abandoned. It wasn't until the early 80s that things began to be turned round, with new developments on the disused docks. Had the two million been found, could the line survive the docks decline? One possibility would be an extension to the line to make it part of a rapid transit network. An extension that was proposed in earlier years was the so-called Belt Route. This route would have joined the overhead to the Cheshire Lines Railway route near Magull, through Aintree, West Derby, Childwall and Gattaca. This diagram shows the Seaforth and Sefton Junction Railway, the northern section of this route. This new line was to be built to connect the Cheshire Lines just south of Sefton and Magull Station. It would have two new stations at Stanley Park in Loveland, and in Neverton. Overlaying the proposed route on a modern day map shows approximately where the line would have run. Interestingly, the route takes it through the site of the present day allotments off Hatton Hill Road in Liverland. The site for Stanley Park Station would have been here, near the junction of Gorthia Lane and Kirkstone Road North. whilst the Netherton station would have been close to where today's Netherton Activity Centre is. This mock-up picture published by the Overhead Railway shows one of their trains at Gathica Station. It doesn't take much imagination to envision overhead trains at such places as West Derby. Powers to build this line were obtained in 1904, together with plans to link the overhead with the Cheshire Lines at Herculaneum. Unfortunately, delays and the First World War intervened and the plans were dropped. A later revised plan was to use the North Mersey Line via Lenica Road and Fort Stations and connect with the Cheshire Lines route near Warbreck Moor. Overhead trains already use this route to entry on Grand National Days, as we see here. These plans also came to nothing, and the overhead continued to soldier on. Had these plans come to fruition, it's possible the line would have survived. The building of the Merseyrail extension in the 70s would then have taken a very different path, quite possibly using a lightweight stock similar to that used on the Tyne and Weir Metro. The idea of the belt route didn't completely die with the overhead. 
The original plans for Merseyrail included the reopening of the Cheshire Land Route and linking it to the underground. But sadly, these plans also never happened. But, as you say, that's another story. We also have to consider two other threats the line would have had to face. The first would have been the publication of the beaching plan. With local lines such as Liverpool to Southport threatened with closure, certainly overhead would also have been a target for the axe. The second would have come from the city planners of the 60s. The 1965 Shanklin plan had a truly horrific proposal of an elevated inner city motorway, part of which would have passed alongside the free graces of the pier head. The overhead obviously being in the way of this dreadful idea. But one unpleasant fact that has to be considered is the decline of the docks. The closure of the docks would have caused a significant drop in passenger numbers. Had the belt route actually happened and the vision of redevelopment the docks taken far earlier than it was, it's just possible the line not only could have survived, but have been a vital link in today's transport network. Mm -hmm.